Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. I wasn't actually planning to make a video this weekend. I have a lot going on around the house. It's a really good time of the year to clean out the garage, make some donations, wash the truck, you know, that sort of thing that we do on the weekends. Unfortunately, it was a really long week. We've had a, a man, I don't know how to word it correctly, but let's just say that when we talk in class, I've talked a lot about this in my videos in the past, about how important it is to measure the length of your line sets when you are installing VRF systems because the length of your line sets could possibly determine needing an upsize in your refrigerant sizes, which if you don't have the right pipe size, you won't have the proper velocity when the system is operating. It can affect oil return, it can kill compressors, you won't get good performance, you may not have proper refrigerant charge, all because you didn't measure your line set lengths accurately. So in today's video, we're gonna to touch on just a couple of things that have come up this week that have really been bothering me. It's been on the back of my mind. And like I said, I wasn't planning on making a video, but I think in just a few minutes, I can show you a couple of things that will help, hopefully help you guys that are doing commercial installs or VRVS installs. This is gonna be more focused on commercial because we have branch boxes and Y branches everywhere, but still, very important things to consider when you guys are doing the installations or maybe you guys are vendors and you're working with installers. These are really good points that maybe you can share with them just to make sure things go as smoothly as possible. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already and you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. All right, you guys, let's jump right in. So anytime you guys are going to be doing a VRF install, specifically a commercial install with three phase equipment, let's say you're doing a heat recovery system, whether it's Daikin or another brand, all the manufacturers have software that you can use to build the piping schematic of your system. And it's extremely important that you follow this schematic. Here you guys will see I have a example schematic. We have a uh, two module VRF system. It's piped together. We call this twinning. I'm not going to go through how to use this software in today's video. I'm just kind of giving you guys a, a picture to reference so that you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about it. But when you guys are installing VRF, you're going to notice that you have indoor units connected to a branch box. Maybe you have multiple branch boxes. So we split off our refrigerant lines. We go down to another branch box. You can see more indoor units on another branch box here. Based on the capacity of the indoor units connected to a branch box and based on the length of all the line sets going back to the branch and to the outdoor unit, all of these are going to determine what the pipe size needs to be from point to point. We call these segments. You'll notice that from the outdoor unit to the first branch, this is segment labeled 3.1 and the length is 73 feet. From the branch box or from the branch to our first branch box, this is segment 3.2. Segment 3.2 has a length of 41 feet. If you guys look at an indoor unit, this first indoor unit has a length of 40 feet. It's segment 3.3. Segment 3.4 has a length of 46 feet. You get the point. Well, what happens when you guys or, or maybe some of your customers are installing VRF systems, they're supposed to be following this piping schematic. Typically, the general process goes, we design it, we print out the schematic, we send it to the lead installer on site, they walk the job site, and they review the schematic to see if anything isn't going to work. Maybe there's a beam that we have to go under or over or around, or we can't do a straight uh, point to point line set run to get into a classroom or an office. Maybe we need to go around the hallway. It is their job to take that piping schematic that is printed out so that they can see all the lengths of all of the runs within the system. And they're supposed to go through the floor plan on site and confirm if there needs to be any immediate changes. If there are, we go back to our software, we update that because what we want to make sure, let me transition us back here. What we want to make sure is that none of these lengths are going to affect these main pipe sizes. Right now, these pipe sizes are automatically calculated based on capacity connected downstream. So this one half, let me go ahead and highlight it for you guys again. This one half, one and one eighths and three quarter inch line set is going to be sized based on the length and the capacity downstream. If 
for whatever reason, this can't be 41 feet and it needs to be, uh, let's just say 141 feet. Let me go ahead and change that real quick. You're gonna notice that all of a sudden we have a pipe size change. And in this particular example, we're breaking some rules so you can see an X here and an X here. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit later or in another video. That's not really the point of today's video. The point of today's video is you notice now we have a pipe size change here and a pipe size change here. If you don't do your due diligence by walking through the job site to make sure that the pipe lengths that are predetermined based on the initial takeoff of the job are going to work and you just install everything that shows on the initial set of plans without double checking things, without double checking and triple checking to make sure we're not breaking any rules, like in this case, we are clearly breaking some rules. Then when it comes time and you're on pressure test or you've pulled a vacuum and you want to know what's the refrigerant charge and you send all these numbers back to your vendor or you plug them into the software to get a charge, you're going to notice that, oh crap, I have to go back and now I need to change out copper. And what really irks me is when I get these numbers back, but I don't even get these numbers back in this format. I just get a list of here's all of our line set lengths. And I'm looking at this list going, well, what goes where? I always try to stress the importance of marking up the piping schematic. This, this document that gets printed that you have printed on site, mark it up on site. So that way, when you have a length change on segment 3.1, you can easily just take a picture of that as it's marked up and send it back to your vendor so that they can look at the same schematic you're looking at and then update it in their software. Something else to consider <clears throat> is, let me go ahead and change this back to 41 feet real quick. Is you'll see that at 41 feet, we have half, one and one eighths, three quarters. And the initial rule that typically pushes this up is the length from the branch to the furthest indoor unit. It can't exceed 130 feet, plus or minus. It's converted from metric to feet. But when you exceed 130 feet from the branch to the indoor unit, that's what causes that upsize change. So you'll notice that our longest run here is air handler 30. So 41 and 46 is 87 feet. So let's just change this and let's say that it was, uh, I don't know, let's say it was 90 feet. Let's see that, no, not quite. Let's say this was 95 feet. You're gonna notice that 95 feet plus 41 feet exceeds 130 feet. The technical is 131.2 feet if you wanna get really technical. That's why when I changed it to 90, 90 plus 41 was 131, which was less than 131.2. So now we just pushed it over and you notice that this pipe size changed. So I have 41 feet of half inch ran potentially that needs to be five eighths. I can't stress the importance enough. Do you want to go back after the fact and cut out that one half inch just so that you can get the right pipe size? What really bothers me is when contractors will say, well, Dana, it's only, you know, four feet. You know, are we going to be okay with that half inch? It's like, no, you're not going to be okay with that half inch. You're going to have potentially performance D rate. So capacity D-rate, you could have velocity issues. The other issue that we'll have is it gets pre-designed this way and the contractor installs 5 8 but they're thinking, hey, I want to reduce the amount of copper that I'm actually installing. I want to try to maybe save on labor, save on materials. And so they're like, oh man, this line set here only needs to be ah, 40, 47 feet. And so when they give us the as-builts, they're like, yep, this line set was only 47 feet. Well, now you're going to notice that our line set installed is too big. So the problem goes both ways. Anytime you guys are doing installs, the best rule of thumb that I always tell my guys is the rule of 130. There's a lot of other rules to consider that are also important. But the one that always kills us is 130 feet from your first branch that you put on your system that's this khrp uh, we call it a refnet refrigerant network y branch it splits off our main line to go to multiple branch boxes shown here this to the furthest indoor unit so from this branch to this box and from this box to each indoor unit you can't exceed 130 feet. And if you do, you need to upsize the copper. So what I tell guys to do is when you're walking the job site, 
measure from where you're going to put that Y branch to where the furthest ender unit is going to be. Because we need to know as close as we can before you actually install the copper, are you going to exceed 130 feet? If you're going to be really, really close, maybe you're 127, 128 feet, that's very, very close to 130 feet. And it may make more sense to intentionally push yourself over 130 at that point just so that you don't run into that situation where you ran a bunch of one half inch and then realize, oh shoot, it went over 130 feet by the end of the day and now it needs to be a larger size, maybe five eighths on the liquid line. On heat recovery systems, we're typically only changing the liquid line pipe size and on heat pump systems, you will commonly have to change both the liquid and the gas pipe size. But we're again, not getting into all the details in today's video. I just wanna show you guys a couple of things here because I can't stress again enough how important it is to have this be accurate. And the most accurate way you can do this is to mark up this actual print on the job site as you go so that you can look at every single measurement from this length 41 plus this first ender unit is 40, 81 feet. We're totally fine there. As you're running all of these units and you come across one and you go, oh man, this one down here is 103 feet. I should probably do a check. Let's go measure that 103 feet plus, oh, this box is only five feet away from the branch. So we're only at 108 feet. So we're fine there. One thing that happens very commonly is when you guys have a set of plans, you're going to notice that that Y branch gets drawn in somewhere that balances out the system. We don't often like to come off of a branch and immediately hit a branch box depending on the lengths, depending on how many boxes we have. I'm giving you a very generalized example here, but coming off of a branch and going five feet to a branch box, we don't like to do that. We wanna have our branches and all of our piping as balanced as possible within the system. In this particular case, we don't have a bunch of lengths that are super, super long, so it's not really that big of a deal, but here's what is a big deal. Notice that I have 41 feet going to BS 1.1, with all these indoor units connected. Now let's note that we have the five feet going down to BS 1.2 with all these indoor units connected. This is an eight port box. This is an eight port box. They are the same branch box. However, look at the pipe sizes, half one and one eighths, three quarters going to this eight port box, but going to this eight port box, I have five eighths, one and one eighths, one and one eighths. But Dana, they're the same branch box. Yes, they are. But what's your downstream capacity? Remember that I said these pipe sizes are both sized or calculated to be sized based on downstream connected capacity to that pipe and the length. What happens very commonly is these indoor units do not get installed on the exact box of the exact port that we pre-designed these units to get installed on. Sometimes these indoor units will move around from port to port, which is fine. You just need to make note of that so that when we build an as-built, we have a correct as-built. So that way we know if something's cross-wired, which port is supposed to be which. I digress, that's not necessarily part of today's video, but sometimes these ender units will actually get moved to the other branch box. And sometimes the labels of these branch boxes are going to change. BS 1.2 may have been BS 1.1 on the plans, and then the label somehow got changed in the field because they relocated these boxes. Whereas 5 8s, 1 and 1 8s, 1 and 1 8s, this box connected to these air handlers originally may have been drawn in at the 41 feet. And then they switched a bunch of stuff around. Where I'm going with this is I've had many cases happen, one this week that really irked me, and that's why I'm bringing this up and talking about it today, where BS 1.1 was down here connected to these units and the length was much longer than five feet. So this pipe here actually needed to be, I'm just gonna go ahead and punch in 50 feet because that should push us over. This length here during the design was supposed to be a three quarter inch line going to BS 1.1 originally. So then they changed it. They came back and they're like, oh yeah, well we installed a 5 eighths liquid line. I'm like, well then you need to change it. They're like, well, you know what? We made a mistake. This is actually BS 1.2 and we only ran it five feet. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what? Like hold the phone. This is, this, this is where I really get frustrated is 
all of a sudden we want to try to come up with new numbers to try to make what we installed work. You guys can't do that. It is very, very frustrating. If you guys are off, you guys are off. And you guys as installers need to know that if you don't have the right size pipe, the right length measured, your charge is going to be inaccurate and the charge calculation itself will be wrong because it's doing the charge calculation based on a certain size liquid line. So now you're potentially overcharging or undercharging the system just because of that alone, not to mention your lengths may or may not be accurate. And the system is going to have performance problems at some point, maybe not today, maybe not during the startup, but at some point you're going to have performance problems and you could potentially have oil return problems. And if you don't get oil back to the compressor, you're going to lose a compressor. So every single time we do lose a compressor, we need to go through and walk the whole job and look at all the refrigerant piping. When you guys are doing startups, if you're service techs, installers, vendors, whatever, you guys need to walk the job site. You guys need to look at the piping install because we can't have it be wrong. And it is extremely frustrating when we try to just make whatever got installed work. Oh, I'm only over by like three feet. That'll work, right? It's like, dude, why are you over by three feet? We shouldn't be over by three feet in the first place. So I'll digress. But you guys, it's 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 frustrating and it's super important. And we talk about this in class and we talk about this in the pre-kickoff meetings when we walk the job sites and we talk about this on the phone. And we, we, we're constantly talking about the importance of this. When you guys are doing your installs, you need to be walking the job as you go. You need to be keeping 130 feet in the back of your mind the entire time of the install because you need to know as far in advance as you can if you're going to need to change a pipe size. That way you can change the pipe size sooner rather than later when you have the system on pressure test and you want to fire it off next week. So you guys, I hope that this information was somewhat helpful it was a little bit of a rant uh, let me know in the comments below if you guys have questions about this i'm sure that somebody out there one of you guys has ran into problems like this it's just absolutely critical that we are not getting inaccurate as built returned everything needs to be accurate we need to do our due diligence service techs and installers we all need to make sure we're just doing things right the first time so that we don't have to go back later and fix it so you guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. I greatly appreciate all of you guys tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you guys click that subscribe button. All right, you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm out. Bye.